This is miles ahead of the last segment. There's plenty going on in this level. It's fun as hell and it's pretty hard too. Right off the bat there's an unseen race against time, but first we have fun with sensors. Now the way this works is that triggering any yellow spotlight will trip the alarm system of the stage and basically, um, drop down easily destroyable blocks. Apparently decent security isn't going to be a factor in this utopia they all have planned. It still wastes time tripping it though, so I avoid the highly visible intruder friendly trap and move on, if only to save annoyance. Now the upcoming blocks are an iffy affair. They trigger based on your placement, and then they go through a predetermined cycle until every block is in place. Waiting them out safely is out of the question when you can't dash, because there's an alarmingly fucking enormous pit waiting at the end of this section. The only way to get across it without dashing is to use the conveniently placed block you're normally meant to use to get the heart tank waiting patiently in a shaft overhanging the gap. There it is right now. But this block is apparently a very fickle thing. If I had wasted too much time, it would have already triggered long before I got there. I don't know which pattern it's part of, whether it triggers once X passes a certain point or not. All I know is that what we'll kindly call speedwalking my way over there is essential, and this means skipping cycles with a lot of fancy jumping and trying desperately not to crush myself against a wall. This first of two mini-bosses can't be made to look any less ugly than is rather embarrassingly playing itself out right now. He has no invincibility time, but trying to perfectly place shots in is laughable. Pelleting him as messily as I can is about the best I can do. Immediately after this is a drop from hell. More yellow sensors. These are decidedly more ugly than the ones before them though. Trip any, and the rain of uh, goopy shit that's falling now is about three times faster. Speaking of goopy shit, this is our old friend Luck come to play for the first time in X2. You notice I almost got caught at the end there. Even when it's sort of moseying down, I'm still way too slow for my own good, so keeping your eyes glued to the placement of those things and firing on them optimally is essential, otherwise you'll find the X-Hunter door blocked at the end. Problem is, they fall in random enough patterns that you can still get very fucked over. All of this is culminating in the easiest looking difficult fight ever. All I do for this entire minute is get the Agile formerly known as Prince to repeat the same blasted move over and over. The problem is he does this very fucking quickly, and he selects one move immediately upon finishing the last. Now I obviously need to go to the bottom to shoot him, but if I'm there a frame too long he'll wig out and start slashing towards me like a nutcase, and once this happens, it's game over. Not that it's possible to dodge at all, but if I did manage to climb the wall and avoid it, he'd immediately jump into me anyway. It's all about careful timing, which is why it looked like I was being so painfully careful. It's a lot more necessary than it seems. If by this point you're wondering why the hell I'm even fighting these guys, well... This run is a challenge, right? So why would I dodge two hard fights just for the opportunity to fight Zero in his wonderfully broken AI? Actually, that still sounds lazy as shit, so I use a password to shoehorn Zero's fighting at the end anyway. And I don't fuck with them. Give me some credit for that, because it's very fucking tempting. And here's... another mini-boss. I love this stage. There's so much fodder to stop me going off on awkward tangents. This guy also seems to have no invincibility, although he sure does a damn good job acting like it. His weakness won't hurt him rapidly, but at the same time, charged shots seem to take a fuckload longer than just pelleting his ass to death. Don't ask me, I don't think about these things. I just sort of sloppily pass by them in the hopes of not losing too much face in the process. The last little stretch is just fun, and again, it's one of those suspiciously convenient things where I'm just barely able to get through without dashing. I'm not sure how this would have looked if those bridges collapsed any faster. All in all, definitely my favorite stage, close to favorite music, and an awesome looking boss. Magna Centipede is usually counted as the hardest of the eight Mavericks in X2, which isn't saying anything really, but uh, it's worth what it's worth. As far as no dashing is concerned, there are a few problems. One, his three-way shots do not a fun time make, although it's usually over before he gets an urge to abuse them. The second is the same problem he always has when he don't want to take damage. If he ever uses three pieces of his tail in the converging attack, there's always the chance they'll be unavoidable. These are semantics. The biggest concern is that without dashing, avoiding his poison attack is only possible once, twice if you burned your fucking fingers mashing your controller. 
This means you want things finished quickly, which is usually helped by the fact that it takes him 20 seconds of showmanship to even finish his tail attack, and like many bosses is apparently very allergic to the X Buster and gets knocked on his ass to teleport again whenever you fire at him. The battle is over before poison becomes an issue. In the end, all of these complications add up to make the fight. Well, still piss easy, but come on, he doesn't have very stellar competition from the other rejects. Outside of Morth Moth, who I fear to mention often out of concern for the fabric of reality. Two of the remaining levels have some very peculiar jumps in them that require copious abuse of their gimmicks. I look forward to justifying that soon. See ya.